today I'm going to talk to you about how I made this needle felt in Mermaid and how you can use the techniques that I use to make hair to make your own sculptures. My name is Charlotte Allen and you have reached my channel The Felting Alchemist. Now I haven't really covered on the channel yet how I make more of my human-like needle felted sculptures and I thought I would use the needle felted mermaid that I made as an example so I can show you how I made hair, the kind of techniques that I use to create hair in the hope that you'll be able to take some of those techniques away and then incorporate them into your own needle felted work. Now I made this mermaid a little while ago now and I've actually made her on floristry wire so she was a bit more poseable, although she's kind of like stuck in her form, I've kind of glued her down so she can't move too much, but if I hadn't done that you would be able to move her arms and her tail and all sorts, so the floristry wire is really nice. I think it was 18 gauge that I used to make this, so it wasn't too firm, but it's firm enough to hold her form nicely. Now one of the really important things that I want to talk about if you're making any kind of human-like sculpture is that you really want to think about the human form and what the proportions are like and you should always make the torso first, okay? So I created this torso on the same frame that I used for my needle felted mice. So I made the standard armature which you can find on my channel where I show you how to make a wire armature. And then all I've done is I've just cut the arms to length to be in proportion with the rest of the mermaid's body now if you could get hold of some wire on a reel or something like that and then you can cut it to length, that would be much better. But at the time I didn't have the longest pieces of floristry wire, so I've kind of connected them together by wrapping them round and it worked really well actually. So if you find yourself in that situation, wrapping the floristry wire around each other just to create a longer piece works really, really nicely. Now in terms of the torso for this mermaid, I didn't really use that much wool at all. And in fact, I didn't actually use any core wool. And the reason for that is I wanted to keep this really fine. I didn't want to have lots of bulk. And I just felt that, and I had quite a large volume of this kind of this skin colored, flesh colored merino wool anyway, that it would be easier just to, just to use that in its entirety for the sculpture rather than using core wool. So I've built this up very gradually. I've really taken my time. It took me probably about 17 hours to make this sculpture. And I started off by wrapping the torso with the pink uh, merino wool bats that I have um, and just very gradually adding and adding and adding to it until I got to the stage where I was kind of happy that it started to take the form of the mermaid. Now, as for the arms, again, I used very minimal amounts and I built it up very gradually and I didn't really add too much until the torso itself was finished so I could really gauge proportions wise how much wool I was going to need for the arms. And again, all I've done to add the wool is use my needle felting wax. I've rubbed it all over the wire and then wrapped it round very gradually, building up and building up without adding too much, because as you know, if you add too much, you can't take it away. Whereas if you add little by little, you can add gradually, you can keep checking it, you can keep looking at it from a distance just to make sure that everything's looking nicely in proportion with each other. So one of the things that I struggled with with this sculpture was getting the breasts right. And I didn't wanted to have like massive Pamela Anderson boobs because it just wouldn't have looked right. It wasn't the look I was going for at the time. I wanted to go for this very almost kind of slightly androgynous looking mermaid. I didn't want to kind of rip off the little mermaid although she has kind of got pinky hair but I wanted to kind of go for my own interpretation of a mermaid and I wanted her to be very sort of waif-like and thin. So I didn't want it to be too big um, so it was really a fine balance in getting the right size. So that took quite a while um, but again it was just adding a little bit at a time and then eventually adding obviously the bralette on top. Originally I was gonna have her kind of with this sort of bare breasts out but um, a few found members were like oh, this isn't very appropriate for a child's room I was like mm, yeah true I might be kind of cutting myself off a little bit here in terms of my audience so I decided to put a bra on her instead and one of the other things I really wanted to add in it was really important to me that I had it in the sculpture was to add her clavicle and I think that's a it was for me a really important feature to make her look quite realistic as opposed to having something again you know I talk about things being linear and not really having any depth to it so it was really important to me to add those very small features that you would expect to see on a human torso um, that you might not necessarily notice but you know you kind of like you look at it and you kind of identify it as looking quite realistic I hope I kind of made sense there. So I really wanted to get that in so I've added that and I've just added that with my extra fine needles 
It's taken me quite a long time, but what you'll find is when you make the armature, you naturally do have like a hollow here. So what I've done is I've just kind of utilized that and I've just used with my extra fine needles that area just to create that small little dip just, just below her throat there to create that clavicle area. So that's how I created her clavicle. And if I turn her around, I also really wanted to get some shoulder blades in there because I didn't want her to have a completely flat back, you see, and I wanted her to kind of like bend a little bit. So her, or, you know, her waist's kind of bending out and then she's looking up into the distance like she's kind of arching, looking at the horizon. And I really wanted to make sure that her back had some shape to it because I thought if it's a flat back, again, it takes away from the realism of the mermaid. So all I've done here is I've folded some very small pieces of merino wool just either side where her shoulder blades would be and then gradually built up on that until I've got to a stage where I'm happy that it looks enough, not too much, and then covered it over with more merino wool. So it all blends in together nicely. And that's why I felt it was really important just to use the wool that I wanted to see externally for the whole sculpture because it just helped me to build up the shape of the sculpture without having to worry about trying to cover it over and cover any white over and then adding kind of unnecessary bulk to something. I just wanted to go straight in with that pink merino because it just makes life easier. In terms of the tail, I did actually wrap the tail in core wool because there's quite a few layers here and I really wanted to create that volume around her bottom area and also kind of around the hips so it kind of really widens around the sort of the top of where her bottom and her hips would be if she was a human being and then kind of narrow it down to the tip. So I didn't really worry too much about the length of the tail because I thought, well, you know, it's a mythical creature, no one's actually ever seen a mermaid. And then all I've done then to create the fins is create two separate pieces on my needle felting brush mat with my multi-tool. I've cut those two fins out and then I've just attached them to the where the end of the tail would be. So really straightforward, really straightforward techniques that we use a lot on this channel already. And then this part here, I don't know what you call this bit here, but the top of the tail, I guess. So this bit that's kind of thicker and kind of folds downwards. And I've used the same technique to create this as I did with the fins. So all I've done is I've used my brush mat, I felted it down with my multi-tool so I've got like a nice sheet of felt. I've then cut the shape out that I need to create this shape going round her waist. And then I've just covered it in the same blue wool that I've used for the rest of the tail. So really simple and straightforward. Now the most complicated part of this mermaid sculpture was making her head and her face and it took me several hours to just kind of get this all together and looking as I wanted it to look. And what a lot of people won't realise is that I've actually attached her head to her neck using polyamide thread so it's almost like I've kind of sewn it on. So it gives it this lovely flexibility but because the polyamide thread is super duper strong it's not going anywhere but I can kind of tilt her head as I want it to kind of be tilted. So it really does kind of add some character to her, but keeps the head nice and secure. And it actually makes life a lot easier in terms of creating the sculpture. Because to create this sculpture with the head in place at the same time as the torso would be really hard. You're trying to get the proportions right for the head, the torso proportions right. It's just a, a, a nightmare. It's just a real pain trying to get everything correct. Whereas by making the head separately, you can then make the ball shape. You can kind of check it against the torso once the torso has been made to make sure that it looks in proportion with everything. And then you can shape it, add the facial features, and then obviously attach it to your neck and your torso. So to make her face, I had a bit of a, a brainstorming sketch session. So I kind of looked heavily on Pinterest to get some inspiration. And I used a lot of inspiration from Pixar characters. So things like Frozen and Tangled. And I really wanted to look at the eyes because I wanted her to have that kind of Disney eye. And if you look at all the kind of Disney princesses out there, they've all got very specific eyes. And um, I really like the Rapunzel eye, which is the eye that I base this mermaid on, which is this kind of more kind of sort of rounded inner eye and then kind of goes more cat-like out to the side. Whereas other princess eyes, it's really interesting actually, if you have a look, you'll notice they all have different shapes, but they, they're all very large and very kind of youthful and doe-eyed. So that's what I wanted to achieve with this sculpture. And as they say, the eyes are the window to the soul. So it was really important to me to get the eyes looking right, because I think once the eyes are right, everything else just falls into place. Now, as I do with all my sculptures, I made the nose before I added the eyes, and I've made a very small nose here. And again, I've just made it using very small sections of the merino pink wool that I've been using throughout the sculpture, just to create that kind of triangular shape on the face. 
and then I very gradually just added a few additional very thin, thin, thin layers of the pink merino wool over the top of that sort of section that I've added and then felted it all down and I used my extra fine needles to do that. So it was a real painstaking task to get the nose looking nice and petite but still having shape to it so that if you look at her on a side profile you can still see her nose um, but it's not too big. I didn't want her to have a massive nose because it was going to take away from the very petite waif-like look that I was going for with the mermaid. So once the nose was in place then I added the eyes and then I added the mouth and the mouth again took quite a while and I used my extra fine needles again to create that mouth shape. So because the fine needles are so fine they kind of go through the wall even though the wall's really nicely compacted this is really solid they go through the wall like butter is probably the best way to describe how the extra fine needles penetrate the wall. So it was a very painstaking process because you're kind of going through something that doesn't have a lot of resistance to it. But the end result are these beautiful, fine, well-defined looking features that, that look very feminine and, and, very, and very pretty. And then I've just added those additional details like the lip colour with a small amount of coral merino roving. And I've also added some brown roving for her eyebrows and also the kind of the eyeliner, the kind of the cat flick eyeliner, which I, as you can see, really enjoy using. And then finally for her hair, I've actually used the same colour of the roving ball that I've used for her lips on her head hair as well. So I added it in quite large sections using the technique that I showed you the other day when we added the fur to our foxtail. And then I waited until I had quite a, a large proportion of hair coming down all of her head and then I've just kind of bundled it up and then I've used my, my double needle pen, my fine needles, to just kind of like tack it down into place. So it's very loosely belted down um, and you can see here there's loads of squidge to it but I think it just gives it that nice realistic hair like look and then I've just tied some more roving around these kind of like bun bunches I guess you could call them just to just add a bit of uh, additional accessorization to it I guess because you know even mermaids have to accessorize guys. And then finally, I've added her to this lovely vintage tin, which I recycled from one of my former projects that um, didn't sell. So I've added her to this. And I've also got some shells attached to the tin as well, just to give it more of a seaside -y look. Now, fun fact for you, I actually live six minutes away from the beach. However, the beach has no shells on it at all. It is literally just pebbles. Sidmouth Beach, there is very few. You might find the odd one, but they're really hard to find. And I really wanted to put shells into this sculpture to give it that seaside -y look. So I ended up having to go to a tourist shop in Sidmouth and spending like four pounds on a load of shells, which really pained me to do. Because I was just like, the beach is there, guys, but there's just, there's just there's no shells on it. So I had to, yeah, bite the bullet and buy some shells from a tourist shop. They're probably from, not even this country, are they? Let's face it. They're probably from somewhere abroad. Um, but then I, yeah, used my super glue to attach them down onto the, onto the tin just to give it that additional seaside -y look. So if there's anything else you want me to tell you about this sculpture in terms of how I made her, anything that I might have missed, please let me know in the comments below. I really hope you found this useful and I'm definitely going to be doing some sort of human-like tutorials in the very near future, so keep an eye out for those. But until then, if you could like this so it gets out to more people, that would be amazing. And please subscribe to my channel because again, it just helps me to get my videos out to more people that want to start needle felting. So I will see you tomorrow with more needle felting hints and tips, but until then, I will see you soon and have a wonderful day. Bye.